Welcome, Pre-Calc, Chapter 1, Section 1. So this is your first Flip Classroom video for Pre-Calc A. Uh, We're going to start off here with our objectives. Uh, you are responsible for taking notes on the videos. I'll be collecting this at the end of the chapters to make sure that you've taken notes on each section. Uh, so our goals today, we're going to find rates of change. We're going to look at linear equations, graph linear equations, and they're going to write and graph parallel and per perpendicular lines. So a lot of our linear equation knowledge we're going to try to review here. And at the beginning here, we go pretty quick uh, through chapter 1. This should be most re reviewed. So back to what slope is. Slope is the rate of change of a line. The rate of change is how the y and x values are changing between any two points. But when you talk about it for a line, it's called slope. And so we should recall that slope, we use m to note slope, which is the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Another way of stating this is the change in y over change in x, where you're using the triangle that represents change. Um, and another way to state this is rise over run. And that's how we usually call it for more graphing. So it depends on the, the what we're dealing with. If it's a uh, two points we're using the formula y2 minus y1 or x2 x, x2 minus x1. If it's a graph we're usually using rise of run. If you have an increasing line, an increasing line, what do you know about the slope? The slope has a positive slope. It's a positive value. Uh, graphically when you look at that an increasing line is left to right the graph is going upwards. So increasing slope left to right going up. Decreasing line would be a negative slope. Left to right would be going downwards. A horizontal line. But this one here, over the slope B, it has a slope of zero. And we can put this as a fraction, our rise of a run. When we're going left to right, there is zero rise. And then there's some value for run. I don't care what it is, but any. Num uh, 0 divided by any number is going to be 0. We have a vertical line. It has an undefined slope. And so we look at a vertical line. If you look at the slope for that, it has some number, some vertical change divided by 0 because there's no horizontal change. So change of y over change of x, the x by 0. And whenever you divide by 0, you always get undefined. You cannot divide by 0. Parallel lines will have the same slope, equivalent slopes, and perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite and reciprocals. Opposite reciprocals. And so example of that, if I have the slope is two-thirds, I call it slope one, a perpendicular slope, which I call slope two, is going to be opposite which means positive and negative so the signs are opposite and then reciprocal so you flip the fraction so these two slopes would have slopes that are, are perpendicular lines or perpendicular slopes so finding the slopes and describing the lines so for given two points so we'll say given the point 2 3 and then given the point uh, negative 4 7 and then I'll uh, we can find the slope of that, but let's find another set of points. So we have another set of points, let's say 4, 5, and a point 1, 7. So we have these two points, we want to find what the slopes are of these points, and we want to describe how these lines uh, relate to each other, so if we compare them. And so to find the slope of the purple points here, so we do uh, 7 minus 3 over negative 4 minus 2. So then 7 minus 3, 4, over negative 4 minus 2, negative 6. So we reduce this, we have negative 2 thirds. We find the slopes of the black points, the line going between these two points, 7 minus 5 and 1 minus 4. We have 7 minus 5, 2, or 1 minus 4, negative 3. So we have negative 2 thirds. So here we have negative 2 thirds and negative 2 thirds. So how do those lines compare? These are called parallel lines. 
their slopes are the same. Um, so symbols, two vertical lines parallel. If you have the upside down T, this is perpendicular. So some abbreviations for our uh, symbols to help you abbreviate your work. But these would be parallel lines. So a lot of times you have the option parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Some of the forms of equations of lines, slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. We note that m is the slope, b is the y intercept. Uh, standard form, we talked about this back in algebra, ax plus by equals c. And then uh, a, b, and c are just constants here. General form, and then uh, this textbook starts introducing general form in a lot of the different types of functions. We typically don't use general form a lot for linear functions, but general form is whenever you get one side equal to zero. And so this is what the book would say general form is. It's the same as the one above, standard form. Now some students would be confused about how they're both positive C. Well, if C is negative, you plus a negative C. Uh, and so that's how you can uh, adjust the sign there. But they're really the same thing. One just has it solved for zero, get zero to one side. And that's the general form where you have zero uh, on one side of the equation. All vertical equations are always x equal, um, I'll call it uh, h. And then horizontal are always y equals k, where k and h are just values where they uh, cross those axes. And then point slope form, y minus y1, the quantity of that equals m times the quantity of x minus x1. And that's given, so you're given the point x1 comma y1. So this point x1, y1 is plugged in in those two spots. And then if you just simplify it, you'll find the uh, equation in slope intercept form. So these are the, the different forms for a linear equation that you should recall from previous math. So let's write the equation of a line through 3, negative 7 with a slope of 2. So whenever we're writing equations, we always need to kind of find slope and a point. Those are the two things I'm always looking for. If I can find those two things, it's pretty easy to write an equation. So here, we're given the slope. The slope is 2. And the point, we're given the point. The point is 3, negative 7. So now we can write the equation of that. There's two different methods to do this. Let's do the first one. And we'll use uh, point slope form. So to do that, our formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And so we plug it in. It's y minus our y value, which is negative 7, equals our slope times x minus our x value. And so then we can just simplify the problem, distribute the 2, and then subtract the 7 to both sides. So this would be the equation in slope-intercept form. If we did the same problem again using uh, slope-intercept, which more, com more students are comfortable with, but it's usually a little bit more work. So to do this one, you plug in your y value, you plug in your slope, and you plug in your x, from the information over here given. Then you're going to simplify the, the product, the multiplication. So this is going to be 6 plus b. Then I have to solve for b, so subtract 6 to both sides to find our b value. Once you find your b value, then you can rewrite your equation with your slope and your b value. So you get the same answer. It's usually a little bit more work to use slope-intercept form, but they both are valuable methods. Find the slope, y-intercept, and x-intercept of this equation. So this right here is in general form. We can find the slope if we isolate y. If we get y by itself, we put it into slope-intercept form. So this one can add y to both sides, and it actually puts it into slope-intercept form quickly. And so then there's our equation. So our slope is the number multiplying to x. Our slope is negative 4. The slope is negative 4, negative 4 over 1. Uh, to find the y-intercept and x-intercept, I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm going to leave it in what I call standard form, or what's called standard form, where I, I just subtracted the 5. So to find the y-intercept, you let x equal 0. x is always in 0 for the y-intercept. So 
if I put 0 in for x here, 0 times negative 4 is 0. So I have 0 minus y equals negative 5. So if I divide both sides by negative 1, I find y is positive 5. So that is the point 0 comma 5. That is the y-intercept. Then we can do it again. What's the x-intercept? For the x-intercept, we let y equals 0. So back to the original equation here in blue, if I rewrite the por portion that uh, the x value minus, and I'll substitute the 0 for y after we're finding the x-intercept. So we have negative 4x equals negative 5. So then we solve for x, we get 5 fourths. And so this would be the point 5 fourths or 1 and a quarter comma 0. So that would be the x-intercept. And so I, I tend to like this method, and, and actually sometimes we'll call it cover up to help us graph it to find these two points quickly. Uh, if you cover up this term and then solve for y, you'll find the y-intercept. And then if you cover up the other one, if you cover up the y term and then solve for x, you'll find the x-intercept. And so that's a way of quickly finding the x and y-intercepts, which would help us graph it as well. So let's write the equation of a line in slope intercept, so our answer has to be in slope intercept form. We want it perpendicular to this equation, but going through this point. So again, I want to find a point, and I want to find slope. So for this problem, it still gives us our point, negative 6, 10, and then slope. We need to find slope. It's perpendicular to this equation. So let's find the slope of this equation. So I could subtract 4x to both sides, and I could divide by 7. So I get 4 sevenths x minus 12 sevenths, but I don't even care about that value. I care about the slope. So the slope of this one is 4 sevenths. That's the slope of this line. But I want a perpendicular slope. So a perpendicular slope is going to be opposite sign and then reciprocal. So that's the slope I want to use. So I'm going to use the point slope form. I tend to use that form to help me write the equation. So it's going to be y minus my y value equals my slope times x minus my x value. So I end up getting plus 6 minus a negative. So I have y minus 10 equals distribute this fraction. Now when I do negative 7 fourths times 6. We should be pretty good at this by now in math. But a quick way of doing this multiplication of fractions is I reduce these two first. So I divide both those by 2 to get that value. Then I can multiply straight across and get negative 21 halves. So that's what I put my y-intercept minus 21 halves. And then I can add 10 to both sides. So I find y equals negative 7 fourths x and then negative 21 halves would be negative 10 and a half plus 10 would be negative 1 half. So this would be the equation in slope intercept form that's perpendicular to 4x minus 7y but going through the point negative 6, 10. So one more problem here and this is what I tend to do for videos. I, a lot of times I try giving you a problem to do. So you're going to try this problem. It's the same kind of setup as the previous problem. When you walk in tomorrow you need to turn this video in in the bin um, if I am present. Uh, now, if I'm absent, you can hold on to it for the next day. Uh, and that's kind of how it rolls throughout the trimester. Uh, if you have a video problem, you should be turning that in the next day. That way I can look at it, uh, correct it, and get it back to you that same day to make sure you're on track with understanding. Or this is a, uh, or this is a uh, flipped classroom video for pre-calc, chapter one, section one. I hope you have a 